video and let's just start by saying Happy New Year. May your 2023 be infinitely better than your 2022 and 21 and 20. sure you can't hear any of my tapping <laughs> or the tissue paper sounds but I'm gonna tap away anyway so as you can see the title reads Final Fantasy 14 Heaven's Ward The Art of Ishgard Stone and Steel quite possibly the longest title of an art book in the history of art books. <laughs> now I should probably pre-warn you that I am a little bit obsessed with Final Fantasy XIV. I have been playing it for around two and a half years and I played it for about three months back in 2016. So I do in fact have four more Final Fantasy fourteen art books to share and I have been waiting quite some time. As you can see, it is still in its wrapper. <laughs> I haven't even opened it. I think I deserve a medal for that. So, I'm going to be very careful and I'm just going to snip, snip. image. 
So as you can see on here, we have our figure in this rather spectacular armour. Now Heaven's Ward is by far one of my favourite expansions because of dragons. That's right, this is the expansion that was pretty much all about dragons. So I'm hoping for some very pretty dragon art in here. If you'll excuse me, I am just going to take a sip of tea. And I will occasionally probably have to rearrange my position, seating position, because I'm hideously uncomfortable. <laughs> but all in the name of ASMR. So, are we ready? So I have not seen the contents, apart from those few sample images on the back. So this is as new for you as it is for me. Well, good start. I like the blue. It's very atmospheric. <laughs> does it have a dust jacket? Oh, it does. What I might do, if that's okay with you guys, is I might just take this off, because I feel it will make it a bit easier to open the book. There we are. So we've got the nice black and white image underneath. Ignore the dent. That's the idiots at Amazon who decide to drop it to the letterbox. Oh. Now there's an image. So there's a little message in the front here from Yoshida Naoki, who is the producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. Um, he is lovingly referred to as Yoshi B. <sighs> and we are already treated to some stunning visuals. We have, I don't know if you can tell, here we have some horns and this rather oppressive looking building and this even more sinister character here. in the game. Apologies if you do know anything about Final Fantasy XIV or gaming in general, um, but I know there are probably quite a few that don't. So here we have one of the promo images, and these are some of the key characters from the series. I will be gushing about a lot of the characters because one of the reasons why I loved Heaven's Ward so much was because of how fantastic the story was, but also how easily I connected and resonated with the characters. So we have my boy, Amaric, here. We have Isail, Horchafont, and Estinian. I should probably have said before, if you do play 14, and you have not gotten to Heaven's Ward, maybe don't watch this video. something about this style which gives the clarity to the actual illustration but the colors are somewhat softened and muted it really does give this almost dreamlike vibe but then you have these big black dark sections which really draws your focus to this point again this huge and here we have some of the classes in the game. A little Lalafell over here. An Aura, or two Auras here. We have a Mikote, who are the cat people in the game. And, you know, just a dude. <laughs> I like that they include the artist's signatures. So this looks like Takahashi Kazuya. There is a little bit of di dialogue, yes, sort of, writing <laughs> along the bottom here, but I will probably um, not um, read them all, and I won't look through every single page in the book, I think, just otherwise this video is going to be ridiculously long, and I have 
no real way of knowing how long <laughs> these videos are. I've got no timer. Oh, some very impressive, very dark illustrations here. I love with this one, at first it just seems to be a mess of spikes and horns and wings. It's very difficult to see a face, but I believe somewhere around here. I'm not 100% sure. I can see an eye. And these are the flames. There is something very unique about the way Final Fantasy XIV depicts dragons. They're not what I would say are dragons in the traditional sense. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. So these were both done by an artist called Tsukamoto. Oh. This one is pretty damn incredible. Again, so many dragons. There's one here. You see one here. This one almost looks very owl-like in this corner. I might just zoom in. Sorry about the um, lighting, unfortunately. It's very dark today. Very gloomy day here. And then here we have quite possibly the most edgelordish of edgelord <laughs> illustrations. I believe Heaven's Ward was the first expansion that gave us the Dark Knight job class. I like the aesthetic, but it's not my favourite <laughs> of the tanking classes. Ah, now that's beautiful. But again, you've got this lighter softness in the middle, and you almost miss the figure up here. With these two, again, very dark characters. And the little group. I'm almost not really sure who we are. I believe this... You don't know. I'm not sure. This is the cover illustration. This is one of the combat situations that you can take part in in the game. Um, this little boy is known as Bismarck, and he is, of course, a flying whale. <laughs> Ravana, another one of the what are known as trials. In these trials you fight with eight other, well, seven other players. Can be quite fun. Depending on how much you like other people. I'm not so keen, so. <laughs> Sorry, another bit of a drink. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's take, it took me a long time to get comfortable playing with other players. We have another view of one of the uh, areas in the game. Here, yeah, just see this wing. I'm afraid my memory is quite bad, so I'm probably not going to remember all of these. Might just skip a few pages here. Oh wow! <laughs> here we have some what look to be posters. This looks like the gold saucer. Just like a little in-game casino. And this actually looks like part of a um, free companies workshop. Free companies are where players can get together and uh, share a space and interact and chill out and game together. I have one, but it's literally just me and a friend. <laughs> You can also get married in the game, but bleh, why would I want to do that? <laughs> Other people do, that's fine. I think a lot of people actually meet significant others in game, which I think is actually quite delightful. I believe, I might be wrong again, but I think the aura were introduced in Heaven. 
Heaven's Ward. Now, as you can see, the men are very imposing, very large, and the ladies are very tiny and very petite, which is fine, but I wish there was an option for a woman that looked like that, because oh, that would have been cool. I want my big, excuse me, muscly dragon lady. Two new jobs that came with Heaven's Ward, Dark Knight and Machinist, which is pretty fun. It was my main job for a while. I tend to flip between jobs, to be fair. Oh, and of course, Astrologian or Astrologian. Very mystical, tarot reading kind of vibes. And now, on to the character. So here is some concept art for the male aura. They've got some pretty wacky hair, as you can see. And I really don't know how they sleep with these. They must sleep literally, like, I, I don't know, upside down, because would they not massively get in the way? Um, and in game, actually, they have the most slimmest, waspish, wispy little waists you've ever seen in your life. But yeah, as you can see, their horns are actually their ears, and they are pretty crazy. So here is the final concept for the female aura. As you can see, bit of a difference. And I'll be honest, I do find the height difference a little bit odd. For example, male aura, I think, can get up to like seven foot stupid, whereas the females, I don't think, get much above five foot, like six, so they literally look like children next to the male aura, which, yeah, I don't know, that just seems odd to me. But they're still pretty, and I do love the face scales. Very unique. I don't, you know, before Final Fantasy fourteen, I don't think I'd ever seen a design like this, with their different types of horns. Some of the key characters. My boy Alfie. Got Sid, who is a regular in Final Fantasy games, if you're familiar. Bestest girl is Stola, who is, yes, a cat girl. Yagiri, who is more in the next expansion than this one. <sighs> oh, Aymeric. He's, he's just beautiful. And he's just, yeah, he's such a good boy. <laughs> uh, Edmond de Fortin. Hilda was pretty damn cool as well. Matoya was fun. Lucia. <sighs> Sorry, I get very excited for dragons. This must be quite an early concept, I think, for Midgard Torma. Because he doesn't have any legs. But, oh, look at the twists. And I love when artists fade out features that are further in the distance to give that idea of size and depth. The way the tail just disappears. Oh, it's beautiful. Something that I struggle with immensely in art is giving the idea of depth. And, of course, there's Chonky Boy. Please excuse my pronunciation, but I believe it is pronounced Hraysvelga. Hraysvelga. And again, as you can see, very unconventional dragon horns here. I'm used to them being, you know, sticking out of the top. I do love this one. It's just like setting people on fire. Like, <laughs> someone was having fun with this image. And they've the fact that there is fur and wings, very reminiscent, I think, of the Chinese dragon. Reminds me of uh, Falcor from Neverending Story, if he actually had wings. Oh, this, you can just tell he's evil, can't you, just by looking at him. This is Nidhogg. He 
is quite a central character to the expansion, as is Harald of Raidsvelka. We've got some of the tribes. You can interact with in the game. And here's some of the armor design, which is a personal favorite of mine. We've got some tank armor. If you're unaware, there are well, four main types of job in most RPG MMOs and video games. You have the tank classes, you have the melee classes, you have healers, and you have the ranged. So here we have monk, which, I'm sorry, I don't get it. I've tried playing monk, but <laughs> Dragoon is fun, but I suck at it. Warrior is probably my favourite tank. It's just very comfy to me. And again, I love this aesthetic. I mean, you can just tell that that is a paladin and that that is a warrior. <laughs> like, without me even telling you. This is when I probably roll. This is the ranged attire. So this will be for things like Dancer. Uh, actually, no, because Dancer didn't exist in Heaven's Ward. This will be for Machinist and Bard. Then we have the... I'm assuming this is for Ninja, because it has its own gear for some reason. This is White Mage. I'm not such a fan of this artwork. It's a bit chunky. This one's a bit better. This is quite cute, actually. This is the Black Mage attire. But I do love these breakdowns where you get to see all the different elements, the hood, the boots, you've got the little trousers here and the underskirt. It's just, it's just so fun. Something I actually enjoy doing myself. I did something sim similar with the character that appears later. And I had a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a summoner outfit, so these are all the maximum level um, gear sets for each of the jobs. So when you reached, I believe it was level 60 in Heaven's Ward, you could get this gear. So this is Scholar. <laughs> I want to say this is Black Mage, uh, Black Mage, um, Dark Knight. But I could be wrong, it just looks, it looks very edgy, and any time I see edgy armor, I'm like, well, that, that must be Dark Knight. <laughs> machinist here. Not the best machinist gear, but not bad. Not bad. Then we have summoner, which it's a bit, yeah. I didn't like that it stole the black mage hat. <laughs> and then we've got some of the crafting jobs, because you can also make things in the game if fighting isn't for you. So I might just skip ahead a little bit, I think. So here's some more. All oh, these are cool. This gear was very, you could start seeing a more Eastern influence. And I do love some of the gear from these sets. I think I had this set. Um, I think I had it for my Black Mage for a while. I'm quite traditional with my gear sets in Final Fantasy XIV. So my paladin will look pretty noble and be lighter coloured. My dark knight will look edgy and, you know, dark. These are from a series of fights in the game called a normal raid and a savage raid. Which I am not into the savage raiding scene. That's horrible. I hate that. That also sucks. That's really bad. That is very generic. So they, they, you know, they hit and they miss with some of these. This one is fantastic. I think I had this for my machinist for a while, and then I grabbed the uh, tank gear for warrior because it does have very warrior vibes. I mean, we've got a very religious inspired robe here and the Halone it's called the Halonic Exorcist attire Halone is the patron deity of the nation in which Heaven's Ward takes place I'm sorry but Hermione 
What are you doing in this book? <laughs> he looks like a clown. Hmm. That looks quite a lot like a character's outfit from later in the game. The colours and the shape of it. I can see where they maybe got their inspiration from. There are, as you can see, a lot. This is actually fantastic. There are so many. Oh, pages of just gear. I'm actually really impressed because this is exactly the kind of stuff that I love. And if you're into making costumes, this information would be invaluable. I mean, look at it all. It's still going. Oh my goodness. And the details. Oh, this is another thing that I'm not so great at is I don't have this level of layering and imagining the separate pieces. I'm very much, I will just draw a silhouette and then draw bits on top, but I won't think about how an outfit is constructed. So looking at things like this and seeing the individual layers, it, you really start to think differently about costuming. This is actually pretty hecking rad. Look at that. I mean, this is for, I believe, it's, a, it's an aiming gear set, so I mean that's a bow, so it must be for Bard. But I mean that's got some serious musketeer vibes. Oh my, oh. Uh, one is very happy. I mean this is like just pure inspiration. Excuse me, I just need to move my foot because it has gone to sleep. If you heard that, that was my hit. So, if you're wondering why I'm not cutting out all of those little bits, it's because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to edit. <laughs> so I'm recording everything together. So apologies if you would rather have a closer look at everything, but we've still got that much of the book to go. And I'm starting to ache quite a bit. So you will just have to get the book yourself. It is available in most good bookshops and online. This set is particularly fantastic. I mean, look at that. The, the dark here and then just the shape and the... Oh, it's just... Mm. Yes, if you haven't figured out by now, I have actually no training in art whatsoever. And I have no idea what I'm talking about. I just make noises. Um, there are still more pages. <laughs> oh my goodness, this outfit is stupid. I'm sorry. It's the Owl Age attire. And I believe this is from the player be player portion of the game. PvP as it's known. And I've seen people wearing this and it is really dumb. Like it doesn't look too bad in a 2D sense. But yet as soon as you spin it round, you just get this stupid bit sticking out. Apologies if anyone's watching this and actually uses this outfit, but it's it's dumb. Sorry. This is pretty nice. It's got a lovely silhouette. And again, I love all of the shapes and the details, but I think we all know the key to a fantasy um, design when it comes to clothing is just belts. The more belts you can attach, the more fantasy it becomes. This is a beautiful illustration. I absolutely love it. It is just so soft and delicate. And again, you can see the use of the fading here to give the impression that this section is further from the eye. Oh, it's stunning. I did use this for my dance for a while, but I got bored because <laughs> my brain cannot sit still. Oh, the wedding outfits. Yep, because remember when I said you can get married in game? Ta-da. But let's move on. Weapons. Big boy axes. We've got some lances down here. These could be monk weapons. The good old paladin sword and shield. Yes, um, Scholar and Summoner have book 
books as their weapons. That is, that is correct. They just hit people with books. The guns. I do love guns in a fantasy setting. It's kind of hilarious, but it also sort of works. More of the same, but the intricacy and the details. Just absolutely beautiful. Oh, this one is just stunning. So to get these ones, I believe, took quite a lot of effort. Because these, I think, ended up being the best weapons in the game. But I don't know if you can see very well, but again, the detail of like the leaves, the little drops. Oh, it's beautiful. They do actually have a competition where they, they get basically um, fans of the game to design weapons for them so they don't have to pay you, of course. But you do get to have, if you win, your designs in the game, which I think I'm going to have to try one day. Oh, I love the Shiva weapons. So these were weapons from the level 50 extreme trials where you fight Shiva. They were beautiful. I had, I got the bow actually. I had that for a very long time for my bard um, because I do like my weapons to match my outfits. I'm that kind of person. So these are from Bismarck. All of the weapons that would drop from that trial. Ravana. These are the Dreadworm weapons. We have some Gordians. So these are from Raids. These are pretty fantastic. The gun especially. Look at that. If you can see it. <laughs> darker, isn't it? I may have to actually open a uh, turn on the light to this, right? I do enjoy weapon design, but it's probably not my favourite. I do prefer costume design, even though I'm not so great at it. Oh, look at all the axes and the lancer sticks. <laughs> I'm going to go with, they're probably lances, aren't they? <laughs> or the archer weapons can be kind of stupid because <laughs> I always think the bards are about like being lithe and graceful and quick you know on their feet and they're ch hefting around this chunk of a weapon yeah these are all ninja weapons look at them all look at how one a basic knife can be imagined in so many different ways from this almost like meat cleaver to this curved horror. I mean, oof. I mean, that's gonna hurt. In fact, they're all probably gonna hurt. But yeah, very impressive. Conjurer, Thaumaturge, so that's white mage, black mage. All of the books, I mean, look at those. see in the book unfortunately is that some weapons do actually have beautiful shiny effects and they are my favourite I have to say so that one's a lovely classic shape but then this one is also very elegant, I'm getting a very elvish vibe from this one and this one is just ridiculous I mean my goodness <laughs> but then it is a dark knight weapon so <laughs> This one almost looks like a vehicle to this contraption. Then you've got the big chunky boys to more classic pistol. Oh, the imagination of human beings is incredible. The astrologian's arms are very interesting. So the idea is, is that you have this thing. I'm afraid I don't know what it's called. And it floats in the and then around it you have cards which are kept in these little deck cases and they just float around. It's really pretty. I love a 
what it is, but I love it. It looks like it's got three heads, though. That's get confusing. <gasps> Phoenix. Part of a very important fight. <laughs> I thought that said quick thighs. <laughs> I want a box called quick thighs. And I like the oven mitten. that are traditional. 
traditionally tris terrestrial when they fly they just do and I wish they just made wings for them because oh it's just it's so satisfying excuse me another piece of plastic stuck to my foot let's remove that so minions as well are little things <laughs> So they are often the characters from the game. So these are all characters. But you can also get a unicorn, a panda, a duck, and a fat cat, as well as a bunch of other things. There are like hundreds of mounts and minions in the game. Look at this guy, heavy hatchling. I actually have quite a few of these. I'm not gonna lie, some of them I don't know. That one I've got, I've got that one, I've got that one, I've got that one, I've got that one. Oh, I think that's it. I will have that one because I think she comes free with the book. So the housing section, I think we'll probably skip through a bit because it is literally just items that you can have in your house. Final Fantasy XIV has housing, um, player housing, and yeah, basically you get like a blank shell that you just fill with furnishings and you can decorate it however you want within reason. Um, and I think in Heaven's Ward they introduced um, expeditions that you could send an airship out that you built and upgraded and it would bring stuff back which you could exchange, which is what most of that was about. And as you can see, you've got the different roofs for the different sizes of housing. There are small, medium, and large. I mean, housing in Final Fantasy XIV is broken as heck, so yeah, I'm not going to go into it too much. So these are the things you can decorate. You've got chairs here, random statues. You've got a couple of beds, lanterns. Hey, maybe one day I'll show you guys my house and game. <laughs> That's quite cute, that's the Glade canopy bed. <laughs> little shower stand, little lantern. And again, they hold competitions for people, that's adorable, to uh, design furnishings to actually have in-game. So here is the section on the actual world. So I'm hoping for some pretty epic landscapes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So here we have the Holy Sea of Ishgar. God being the main city in the game. And I am, oh, I, can, I just, I love these kind of illustrations. They are just so grand. And when you see them actually in the process of being painted, you see the forms coming out of nothing, because that would have just been a blob. And they would have filled in all these details, and it just emerges out of nothing. Oh, I'm so jealous. Of, well, I'm jealous of all their ridiculously hard work to get to where they are. I just do not have the patience for this kind of detail. I mean, the lighting alone. It's just not something I have <laughs> the ability to figure out. My, yeah, my goodness. I, but then I haven't tried. Excuse me, I'm just going to plug my computer in. Yeah, to be fair, nothing happens without practice and study and effort. So all these people would have studied like crazy to hone their skills. I just, I, as much as I admire this, it's not something I'm hugely interested in. So it's not something I would want to really dedicate time to. But I can still look at something like this and see the patterns on the flooring, the, the perspective again, the way it draws the eye in, the light radiating from the chandelier, all of these details that you probably run past in the game and don't even notice. So this is all still Ishgard, which as I said is the main city where Heaven's Ward takes place. It's got a very cold vibe and it's, I think it's got quite a cold climate. I mean that's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. That lighting. Again that sense of depth that I was talking about. You just feel 
the scale of it, even in a tiny little picture like that. I got, I don't know why, but when I was playing, I mean, I'm sorry, but I just see the eye of Sauron. <laughs> when I was playing through, um, I don't know, I got like quite a Scottish vibe, even though the names of the people of Ishgard are all French sounding. I definitely thought of them more as Scottish. So I'm going to turn the book round as we've got some land, uh, some landscape paintings here. So these are more areas within the game. It's getting really dark, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is, it's a beautiful area, it's called the Sea of Clouds. And it's beautiful as you can see all these floating islands, but it is a pain in the proverbial to actually navigate, especially when you haven't unlocked flying in that area. Because 14 has a very annoying habit of making you unlock an area, do everything you need to do, and then unlock flying. I believe this is another view. Got a big old airship here. I love this. You can see the slight curve of the world surface there. Because in reality, we have only really seen a tiny portion of the world in which Final Fantasy XIV takes place on. Whole continents have yet to be explored. So again, more of the Sea of Clouds and the design elements here of the tribe that lived there, the Vanu. Bright, quite vibrant, these totems. That thing, definitely remember that. <coughs> Moving on, oh okay, it's landscape again. Vanian forelands. I mean, again, that is such an impressive image. The rays of the sun shining through. But again, everything is pointing and leading your eye to this point here. Which isn't even in shot, I apologise. There we go. <laughs> again, unfortunately, the uh, state of the light where I am is washing this out somewhat. But it is more vibrant, I can assure you. Sphere. So 
also very different, like the reds and the purples here just seems very supernatural, very spooky. And all these jagged edges as well. And then we have the Holy Vault, again a very, very different theme. Look at the echoing cathedral halls, the pillars, the great Google Library. <laughs> Aetherochemical Research Facility. <laughs> I wonder what this is like for someone who's never played the game, because obviously this is all relatively known to me, but <laughs> to some of you, you're probably thinking, uh, what the heck? <laughs> but for those of you who perhaps think of video games as just being for children, I very much hope that perhaps I can convince you otherwise. <laughs> because look at this. <laughs> this is wasted on children, and I would say actually that I think the player base of Final Fantasy XIV is probably more grown up. I don't think a lot of youngsters play it because it is quite, <sighs> there's a lot to it I think, particularly story driven. It's not like Fortnite or Minecraft, you can, yeah, it is not like either of those of which I do not play and I never will because I need more from my gameplay. I need worlds, I need story, and I need characters. And 14 is one of the most incredible of all of those things. I absolutely adore it. And this book has been absolutely stunning. It has had everything that I have wanted and more. I mean, we've still got pages <laughs> left. More pieces of technology. Look at it. And they've got the right idea. There's very minimal writing. There's enough. But, you know, they, they know what we want, and that is concept art, which has got to be my favourite type of art. I love looking at all of this. And I very much hope you do too. So I think we are probably getting to the end of the video. Apologies if my computer has <laughs> been somewhat loud the last sort of five minutes. Um, and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, as I said, um, there are four more of these that I would love to look through. Whether I'll do them all in one go, or I'll break it up a little bit, I don't know. <laughs> if I was being selfish, then yes, I would look through them all, because they've been sitting with me for so long. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry, I'm going to interrupt myself. Sketches, oh my goodness, I love these. This might be my favourite type of concept art. I love looking at the earliest renditions, the roughest. So we've even got Viera, which they were not released as a playable race until two, expan uh, yeah, two expansions after this, which is pretty impressive. So I assume it says all our concepts, the Viera, the Vianga, and then Beastly, so I'm not quite sure what that means. Are these, were these all early Aura concepts? Because they actually released Viera later on. That's interesting. But yeah, I love the roughness. No, you just get the basic shapes. Oh. oh my goodness, I'm so happy these are in the book. So these are early concepts for the, again, the Aura as a race. And you can see the directions in which they were going in. So this was a more demonic, draconic vibe. So here we've almost got more bestial faces, more dragon features, big horns. I mean, here you can see complete devoid of any human features, but these horns remained. I'm kind of disappointed in a way that we didn't get more of these style aura because this 